Hi, this is Chris. Today I'm going to share my 52 flags handmade for weeks one through four. And I also thought I would show you my little uh, work box that I made, my little project box. This is made from a cardboard box that I found at the Dollar Tree. I covered it with scrapbooking paper and it was just before Christmas and they had stacks of these with peppermint sticks in them and I was looking for peppermint sticks to put into a little jar as a Christmas decoration and the peppermint sticks were perfect and the top box was almost empty so I just took the few that were out of it and I took the box with me and they had no problem with me um, taking the box with me so I uh, as I said I covered it with scrapbooking paper and then this is a little storage box you can see that right here it has a little place to put a label and it's a cute little storage box and that fit right in there and then the lid fit right in here it just everything fits so perfectly so I have my pin cushion um, this is a hand quilted pin cushion that I made in my fiber arts quilting class and it's weighted it's filled with sand and it's weighted then I have my needle case with my little scissors and I made this from some uh, brocade that my uncle brought me back from Hong Kong he was a merchant marine and I have my needles in here I recently bought some milliners needles to try those out and I have all kinds of needles and pins in here and then a piece of vintage handkerchief as a tie which I thought was kind of a funny juxtaposition the common little decorated handkerchief and the beautiful shiny brocade and a little bit of lace and then this is a needle stop and I found this little tutorial online. The needle stop is on a video called Teeny Tiny English Paper Piecing Pincushion Tutorial by Emma Jones Vintage Sewing Box. I believe it was posted sometime last year or earlier because it's been a while since I made this. She calls it a needle stop, but she says most people would call it a pincushion. And I put a little washer in the bottom of mine so that it actually does stop a needle. If a needle goes in there, it hits that washer. But uh, I thought that was really cute and that was not my first experience with uh, English paper piecing, but probably my second. So I have that in there and I'll put a link to that video in the description below. And I have an old thimble, I think it was my mother's or my grandmother's. Um, it's an advertising thimble, the Prudential Life Insurance, it says on it. And it's bent, which um, I like because it fits the finger better, because our fingers aren't really round. I have um, some beeswax in a holder that I can use to run my thread through. I have two spools of 100% cotton thread. And I have made some tags so I can journal about each of the 52 flags and I have cut out my patterns so I'm not doing bunting which is what um, Anne is doing um, I'm going to do a book and it's sort of a cross between Anne's 52 flags and uh, Roxy Creations Journal of Stitchery so this will be the cover. I'm still working on it. It'll take me a long time to do it. I'll take my time to do this. And I haven't decided if it'll be soft cover or if it will be hard cover. But if I decide on hard cover, I've already chosen the book. This was from my mother's library and probably what I would do is I would put cloth on both sides of this. I would maybe cover this with some paper to block out um, the images and just put some sheeting on it and then sew the cover around the edge and put this on the spine. I thought that was kind of pretty. It's also from a sheet, I think. 
So, but there's plenty of time to decide that. I probably won't really decide until the end of the year. So I can keep that in there to work on. So I'm going to move this aside for a while. Oh, I have my embroidery threads in this um, Kings Canyon, Sequoia Kings Canyon National Park, California souvenir cedar box. I like to collect these. This one I bought it um, many years ago, but I've also collected some in thrift stores and uh, antique malls. So the first was a pocket with a message and so I put in a message another year long stitchery challenge let's have fun. A pocket and a note to self. So that was number one. Number two was uh, old-fashioned woven darning and I was having difficulty with this so I simplified it. I just did weaving across my little hole there and then I have my little tag in here which I write the date and, and the uh, prompt on and then weeks three and four so week three was uh, fragments and buttons in here I also have a little tag and then uh, week four was windows and I noticed that Anne is um, right now doing all of hers this shape but I wanted to try each shape so I did each shape which was interesting for the windows since it's not square and then right now I just have them uh, pinned down so the next page will be this page and these are also work, working like a sampler so I have a running stitch here and I have a back stitch here and then five six and seven and eight and when, oops, when I come to the end of the year, then I'll decide if I want to just stitch these together or if I want to put um, a piece of thin batting between them and then um, stitch them together. So I was thinking what I would do is I would put this shape tag on this side and then I could just stitch them both on at the same time and same here this shape tag on this side that's my plan for the year so some of these um, I coffee dyed this here is uh, batting which has been separated I've pulled it apart so it's thinner and I coffee dyed that and this and this I just dunked the edges in a coffee dye same here this has um, Tim Holtz vintage photo distress ink on it and then I used a water brush to blend it into the fabric. And so in here I have started some little sampler stitches and these will also fit right here. They'll be tight but I'll put them on a page too somewhere. I haven't decided where yet. So I have a sampler of um, running back, split, stem, chain, whipped run, whipped back, and woven back. And then here a sampler of some feather stitches, single chain stitches. And then in here I can keep um, different pieces of, of fabric scraps. I have another basket um, with more of these. This is, um, I'm also doing Ann Brooks 52 tag roulette. I'm doing it much smaller than she's doing it. This is the first month, which was um, the white on white, the florals, and the macrame. And in here I've got like pieces of old quilt and um, different scraps that I can pull from for that for that and for this cover piece. And 
And then under here I have more um, sheeting scraps. And then if I take this out, I have all the sheeting scraps for my pages for the year, plus extra leftover sheeting scraps. And here you can see I covered the bottom with scrapbooking paper also. So this makes a handy little um, project box that I can take with me to different parts of the house if I want to. And my fabric scissors can fit in here as well as my um, flexion pin. Um, these are great. This can um, this will disappear with a warm iron. So that works really nice and it comes in different colors including white. And then I've got a pencil for taking notes. And I have a notebook and if I try really hard I can fit that in here too. Might get a narrower notebook. And then um, my embroidery flosses right there. And that's my 52 flags for the first month, weeks one through four. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Have a great day stitching, crafting, whatever creative thing that you love to do.